We'll get to the latest on Andrew Wiggins as we take a look at what Steve Kerr had to say about him a couple of days ago. You're watching Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of Dub Nation had a phenomenal weekend and your weeks are off to a good start. Before we provide you with an Andrew Wiggins update, let's take a look at what the Warriors did over the weekend. And honestly, this weekend slate, a perfect summary of the frustrating experiment that this season has been for the Dubs in 2022 and 2023. You have the good, and then you have the bad. The good, the Warriors winning Friday night against a quality Philadelphia 76ers team. That's one of the hottest teams in the NBA and one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. You're thinking, okay, that's a victory that's going to help the Warriors establish some momentum going into the final stretch here of the regular season with the playoffs around the corner, and hopefully that's a game, that's a victory that can ignite this organization and get some confidence beneath this team's feet so that they can start playing quality basketball here with only a few games left in the regular season. But then Sunday happens. A bad, awful, uncharacteristic like choke job against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Against the Sixers, the Warriors able to close that game strong play really solid ball in the guts of the game and close it out in strong and impressive fashion. And you're able to survive Joel Embiid going off for 46 points and being absolutely unguardable, as Draymond Green said after the game. And offensively, Jordan Poole comes in off the bench, scores a team-high 33 points. Steph Curry, he pops in for 29. Klay Thompson with 21. That's a quality win against a playoff team that, of course, did not have James Harden, but you're able to escape with the victory after Embiid, who's been on this torrid pace, dropped 46 points on your head. And you're thinking, okay, that's a great win heading into Sunday's game, which is really, really massive in the Western Conference standings because of how close Golden State and Minnesota are in the Western Conference. And then what happens at the Chase Center? The Warriors just crumble in a very non-Warriors way. In the waning moments, Draymond Green, we consider him to be one of the smartest players of all time. He commits that turnover that leads to that massive and clutch Carl Anthony Towns three-pointer. And then after that, Jordan Poole and Steph Curry have this miscommunication. There's a turnover there when Poole's pass goes out of bounds, and Steph Curry isn't able to get the ball in his hands to maybe give the Warriors a massive victory down the stretch there. And why that loss is so important and so big for the Golden State is because the Warriors are six in the Western Conference standings right now. They're only a half game up on the Minnesota Timberwolves, where the Timberwolves are in that seven spot right below the play-in cutoff. So if the season were to end today, yes, Golden State would finish as that sixth seed. They would take on the three seed right now. But look, with a few games left, if the Timberwolves are able to overtake the Warriors in the Western Conference standings, we might look back at Sunday night's game as the game that had the Warriors in the play-in tournament and not the actual NBA playoffs. And look, classic overreaction that I saw on Twitter. Jordan Poole forced it a little bit. Late in the fourth quarter, not just with that pass, but a couple of the decisions and some of the shots that he put up. And Jordan Poole throughout this year has forced the issue at times. And it's no doubt been frustrating. But let's be real, this entire season for Golden State has been very, very frustrating. But some people are on Twitter saying, oh man, you see how Jordan Poole's playing, especially in the game's biggest moments. The Warriors are really going to regret that contract. Too big of a contract for too little production of what Jordan Poole's been able to do in his career. I also saw the Warriors have to trade Jordan Poole this offseason. Hold your horses. Relax a little bit. That's a classic overreaction. Did we see what Jordan Poole did last year? Jordan Poole is phenomenal in the regular season as well as in the NBA playoffs. And when Steph Curry is out, this is a team that has to rely on Jordan Poole to be the primary scorer, the primary offensive creator in terms of getting buckets, and Jordan Poole has value in that regard. Can we also talk about how Jordan Poole is still a really young player? He's 23 years old, and at some point, Steph Curry is going to get older. He's already been somewhat injury prone. He's already missing a lot of games. You have to be able to rely on somebody 
to really shoulder the load of that offensive production. And that's what Poole's been able to do, which is not an easy task. You can start him. You can bring him in off the bench like what the Warriors have been doing. He's that valuable flamethrower as that six man right now. He serves a valuable role. Let's not overreact to a couple of bad decisions that Jordan Poole has made. I would not trade him this offseason, and I don't think it's going to be a big, big regret for Bob Myers in this front office. Before we get to Andrew Wiggins, I want to hear from you. Can the Warriors win the West? It's a wide-open West. Denver Nuggets, the number one seed outside of that. Who's the go-to bona fide contending team in the West? I know that the Grizzlies have had the Warriors number in the regular season. Come playoff time, though, Golden State's experience is very valuable. Los Angeles Clippers, Paul George is injured. I mean, we're talking about a wide open West where the Sacramento Kings are up there in the standings. Phoenix Suns have barely been able to play with Kevin Durant. So can the Warriors win the West? Give me a W for win, L for lose. Let me know. As for the latest on Andrew Wiggins, still no official update on his status, right? But Steve Kerr had a couple of things to say about him over the last couple of days, which really goes to show you what the Warriors as an organization think about Andrew Wiggins. Steve Kerr, after the awesome Mavericks win, said, well, we love Wiggs. He's a huge part of our team. He's a great player, but he's a great human being. He's just a great teammate. I love coaching him. So anytime you see one of our, your guys struggling, dealing with something, all you can do is support that player and give them space. And that's what we've tried to do. But our players, our coaches, front office, we're all thinking about Wiggs every day. If he comes back, great. If he doesn't, that's fine too. We just want to make sure that he's in a good place, taking care of his family, and we'll see how it plays out. Andrew Wiggins, folks, has now missed 19 consecutive games. There is no official timetable as to when he might come back. And for Steve Kerr to say, if he comes back, great. If he doesn't come back, that's fine too. This team, this organization, is not putting any pressure on Andrew Wiggins to come back. And we don't know the personal matter that he's dealing with. We don't know the severity of the issues that Andrew Wiggins is dealing with right now. But I think this is the right way for the Warriors to handle this, is to not force him to come back. Where you don't put an ultimatum on his plate when he's dealing with something mentally and say, look, we need an answer right now. The answer that I do know for the Warriors, as far as their playoff chances, without Andrew Wiggins, who is the second best player for the Dubs in the NBA Finals, it's going to be really difficult to go back to back. You think about the overall value that Wiggins has. Solid and improving offensive player whose three-point numbers have gotten a little bit better with the Dubs because of the supporting cast alongside him. He can put the ball on the deck. His athleticism allows him to finish around the rim. He has a pretty good mid-range game as well. And confidence-wise, he's really started to come into his own with the Warriors. But you look at his four seasons now with the Dubs. When he gets traded from the Timberwolves, less than a 34% shooter from three-point range. 2020-2021 goes up to 38%. Two years ago, career year for him, first-time All-Star, 39% from three. And this year, in 37 games played, 39.6% from downtown on 17 points per game, five rebounds, and stellar defensive play. It's not even the offensive impact for Andrew Wiggins that's so valuable for this team. It's honestly what he does on the defensive end of the floor. Look no further than what he did in the NBA Finals against Jason Tatum. Played lockdown defense. One-on-one coverage. On an island against one of the top offensive wings in the NBA, Andrew Wiggins proved his value, man. And he was able to play stellar defense and wear Jason Tatum down. Now, up to that point, Tatum had logged a bunch of minutes. The workload for him offensively was pretty massive. Didn't make anything easier when Andrew Wiggins was just dogging you and right in your grill every time you touched the rock. And then it seemed as though, you know, anytime the Warriors really needed a Big rebound, big play. It was Wiggins who was there. And it's pretty telling. You know, you talk about the second best Warriors player during the NBA Finals. It wasn't Klay Thompson. It wasn't Draymond Green. It was Andrew Wiggins. And I think that's why the Warriors gave him that contract extension. So look, you got to take care of yours. You got to worry about what's going on in between your ears with your mental health for sure. 
You know, you can't force a guy to come back because if he does come back and he's not right mentally, he might end up costing you more than him just being out of the lineup. You know, so I like how the Warriors are really treading lightly in terms of the situation because mental health is a real thing, right? But I'm just saying, if the Warriors do not have Andrew Wiggins, it's going to cost them, no doubt, in the playoffs. And they are going to miss him very, very much. Now, getting back Gary Payton the second is huge for them defensively because you saw his impact against the Timberwolves on Sunday. He played well, hit a three, and was very active, long. He can help serve that role. But Gary Payton the second is not Andrew Wiggins. So uh, that's what Steve Kerr had to say about Wiggins. Still no official statement from the team as to whether or not he's going to come back. But he has now missed 19 consecutive games so far this year. Appreciate all of you for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so for year-round Warriors coverage. Like the video, comment, and we'll see you next time here on Warriors Today.